What's going on guys? So we are back. We are looking at my dad's 2021 Ford Escape plug-in hybrid. And this will be the tow behind vehicle behind their new or new to them class C motorhome. So what's going on today is that he is wiring it up so the turn signals on the vehicle work in conjunction with the turn signals on the RV. They already have a brake system which utilizes this cable right here that will actuate the brake pedal whenever the RV slows down or the motorhome slows down and the inertia or pressure of the vehicle pushing on the back actually triggers that to pull and it pushes the physical brake pedal inside of the vehicle which will actuate the brake lights. But you need more than just that and you also need your turn signals. Now today uh, what's going on is the wiring for that. So the process essentially means getting underneath the vehicle, you can see that it's propped up on the side right here, to run this cable all the way to the back. And the way that works is He's tied it off on the front right here, so basically he's not going to pull it loose. This is part of the tow bar up front, or not the tow bar, but the base plate that mounts to the vehicle so you can tow the vehicle. He also modified this bracket, which was included with the kit, to fit the two holes here that are part of the base plate for the tow bars. And this is where the plug's going to go. So this is going to go right here. The plug end will be right here, so you can plug it into the RV. Here are the cables and he's running them underneath the vehicle and it will come out the back and it will intercept the light connections back here. Okay, and apparently if you look through this hole, that's the actual entry point to get the cable into the back area behind the light assemblies and there's one on each side so you have access points to get your wiring in there. That's actually really convenient anytime you need to access things. It's always good to have some type of a routing location that's already there. But he's basically following the same installation method that the folks at eTrailer produced in their video doing the same type of install on a Ford Escape. So that's one of the cool things about working with eTrailer is they really try to use every chance or every opportunity they can to do an install on every type of vehicle that they sell a product for. And I believe the actual vehicle that they did the install on was a 2021 Ford Escape that was actually the same color. So it was very, very similar. They showed installing the tow bar up front, putting the base plate in, wiring a lot of this stuff in place. So the reference videos alone, and they've helped me in the past, before I was even sponsored by eTrailer, just the quality of video that they put out showcasing how to install stuff made processes like this far less stressful because you had a, a visual reference that you could look at whenever it came time to install things. But um, Dad, any challenges so far that you're experiencing? No, uh, actually it's gone a little easier than I thought this morning. Uh, the heat shields where I'm routing the wires on the bottom of the car actually are accessible pretty easily and I've been able to fish the wire through without any real obstacles or problems and uh, it's going quite, quite smoothly this morning. Uh, there's plenty of uh, room in the heat shields. There's nothing hot down there. Uh, staying away from the, any exhaust or any moving parts, of course. But um, I think it's going to go pretty smoothly today. So it's pretty much just being flexible enough to constantly crawl underneath your vehicle to route wires, right? Yeah, yeah and skinny enough. Yep. And you're a young man, so that probably uh, benefits you there as well. Now, the next question I have is kind of like the first question we asked in the last video, and that is... When it comes to difficulty, if we're gonna rank this a one wrench to a five wrench in terms of difficulty, one being the easiest, five being you know, very, very difficult, what would you rank this specific? Well, if I don't run into any further obstacles, I'd give this probably a two. Wow, so. It's, it's really a lot easier than what we did yesterday. So the base plate on the front, you ranked a four, and that was mainly because, here's some best practices we can follow up on that one. That was mainly because the front bumper cover was very difficult to put back on in a way that your seams right here met properly and that it felt like it was pushed all the way back to where the grommets and screws on the bottom would go in straight um, or would line up properly. So, you know, we tried several different methods. We pulled it off, we put it on, pulled it off, put it on, and then we found out that it had to go on perfectly straight. We tried starting from the top and the bottom and it didn't work. You, there was something binding somewhere. And it's probably just binding against all the curves and accents on the vehicle to where when you put it on at an angle at all, like you try to slip it on like that, it it doesn't line up properly everywhere. But the minute we decided to just go straight onto it, everything kind of lined up in place and things worked out well. 
Um, he had forgotten a step, and that was when he drove off, he realized his air conditioning didn't work and his lights or some other things didn't work, and that was because the wiring harness up front wasn't connected correctly or wasn't connected at all, right? Yeah, the, ma the main wiring connector to everything that's in the front uh, bumper cover goes through a big uh, rectangular connector right in front of the passenger front tire but it's also uh, it fits into a grommet on the side inside that you have to pull it loose from first and then it's a very uh, it's kind of a complicated affair to get the connector apart but putting it back together was real easy once you take it apart you know how to put it together real easy but I had forgotten to make that connection I had to come back and uh, do that one before all the lights and stuff would work and after this is all done with your wiring you're pretty much done with the tow vehicle at that point, right? Everything else is going to be on the RV. we got to do the mud flaps, got to do other things. But are there any other projects to finish up on the Escape? No, the tow vehicle is going to be done. When I get done with the wiring today and get the diodes installed and test it behind uh, something with a seven-way connector because it converts the kit that uh, comes that I got from e-trailer for this has a seven wire connector of course on the RV end but it's a six wire on the towed vehicle and so you have to uh, make sure you test it when you're done that uh, the lights do what you want them to do because you will need it for turn signals and brake lights. Perfect. Now I want to give a big shout out to my channel sponsor eTrailer.com. They provided all of this equipment for this install. Um, they're hooking us up to make sure that this is all done with the right stuff and that whenever everything is said and done it works the way it needs to work which is really really awesome. eTrailer carries all of these products and they carry a lot more plus I I'd say the biggest value point of working with e-trailer is having them consult you when you need help, having them walk you through the process and just the sheer amount of videos and content for instructional purposes to do this the right way the first time is, is priceless. It really does come in handy when you have to watch videos. And I think, I mean, honestly, before you even broke into this process and did all this, you watched some e-trailer videos. What was your take on on how they performed the installs that you're doing now? Oh, they were invaluable to me. I learned so much from watching the videos that uh, I was basically just using the instructions that came with the individual pieces to verify that I was doing it right because I knew from watching the e-trailer videos uh, pretty much exactly what I had to do. Um, like I said, the only the only uh, glitch I ran into was trying to mount the front bumper cover. Uh, you, it, there's some finesse to that, and there's no real way to explain it. Uh, you just kind of have to experience it. Yep, and you had Jake from eTrailer standing right there helping you the whole time. You just never asked him for help. Yeah, I couldn't shut him up. <laughs> <laughs> I am not highly versed on the process of prepping a tow vehicle behind an RV or a motorhome. I've never done it before. That's not my forte. I've been towable tra trailers, fifth wheels, all of that. And of course that all comes pre-wired and pre-connected for that. Uh, so this to me is kind of a learning curve. This isn't your first vehicle that you've used as a tow vehicle either. So you're, you're pretty versed in this whole process, but going through it every single time, I mean, it, it just kind of seems like one of those things that if you don't, if you don't feel you have the skill to do it and you don't feel you can watch the video to do it, just have a professional do it, right? Well, yeah, and uh, I would just caveat that with uh, a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you want to call it, just some uh, voice of experience. It seems like the newer the car, the more difficult it is, just simply because there's so much uh, infrastructure built into the car for safety purposes now. Everything's a crumple zone. Uh, on the older cars, there was a lot more room for access for cabling and wires and connection points for things. On the new cars, you have to do quite a bit of trimming of a lot of plastic and hard plastic parts that are really integrated into the construction of the car for safety for, uh, for the front end, basically for the car to sacrifice itself to save you. Yep. So keep in mind, my father's also a retired mechanical engineer, and he was in the Air Force for a, a good chunk of his life working on aircraft. So he, he knows a lot about working on things, taking things apart. If you don't feel that you can handle this, 
definitely find a shop to do it for you. It's definitely something that you don't want to get into halfway, realize that you can't do it and your vehicle is taken apart because that's that makes it more difficult if you need to try to get it to wherever you need to get it to get the work done. Okay, so we ran into kind of a, an interesting complication. We're back here, we have the taillights removed and we're installing these diodes. So these are to allow the RV lights to control the brake lights and the turn signals and the running lights. Now, the challenge is that if you have a brake light or tail light on your RV that uses the same light where you turn it on and it just gets brighter whenever you have your turn signal or brake lights on, you have to run these diodes back here if you have a separate system, which means you have a brake light and you have a parking light or a turn signal that's independent. Basically, it's not the same light that just gets brighter or dimmer. Um, and that's how it's set up on the back of the Escape. You have the, a separate turn signal, a separate parking light, and the parking light and the brake light are the same light. So it just gets brighter or darker, right? Yes. And because of that, we have to run these two diodes. And we installed them. We came out to test. We hit the brake to see what would happen, and the lights would flicker, and then they'd shut off. And all of a sudden, it appeared as if maybe we broke something. Maybe there was some type of a, a CAN bus or computer-related glitch because of resistance across the wire. That's what I originally thought is perhaps LEDs draw such little power that part of the resistance is actually the wire itself. So if you cut into the wire, you can mess that up because that's how parking sensors work. If you try to extend parking sensor wires, you cut into it, you've messed up the resistance of that wire. There's resistance in the wire that's factored into the sensor and it's not going to function properly. And I thought that may have been what happened. And now we're running into a scenario where there, it would be very difficult to repair this without having to get a new harness. But we started messing around with it more and more and more. And, you know, we came up with the idea, maybe the battery on this hybrid is actually dead or too low and the voltage has dropped too low. Um, and we tested it and that's indeed what happened. The battery voltage was like to seven volts and it's a, it's a 12 volt starting system, even though this is a plug-in hybrid with a battery pack in it, but you still need to maintain the main battery in it at 12 volts. So we couldn't even move the vehicle because we didn't have enough power from the main system to kick in the hybrid system and allow it to work. So we have a charger up front that's on it right now, maintaining the battery and just building it back up. It probably needs to be replaced at this point. But now that we were able to get a charge on the main battery. Everything's working back here normally. We have the diodes wired in properly. We're putting the second one in now. There's two on each side, one of them for your brake lights and the other one for your parking lights. And this is one of those things that you have to be careful whenever you are installing something in a vehicle and you run into a problem, you sometimes have to step back and look at the bigger picture, look at what else could be impacting what you're doing, maybe not exactly what you're doing. And in our case, again, we were having some really weird light flickering, the lights would come on, then they'd shut off and things like that taking place, then we couldn't start the vehicle. And it was just very odd. And then we figured, you know what, let's just check the main battery after checking the main battery, we could tell the voltage was way too low. We threw a charger on it. The minute we turned the charger on, headlights, everything came on, and we were good to go. So it helped us kind of misidentify a problem that we're now able to fix and move forward with. So I've cut into the wires. Right now what we're doing is the brake wires. We've already done the parking lights, and this is basically your driving lights where they're always on whenever you turn them on on the RV. This is going to be the brake lights now. We just have to splice into it and put the second uh, diode in place to be able to control those. So one other thing that my dad kind of reminded me of is how the turn signal is now going to work on the escape behind the RV versus how it would traditionally work. So traditionally, this is your turn signal light from the, the inside of the escape. If we go in right now, turn the vehicle on, hit the turn signal, this is the light that would flash. It's a incandescent bulb that he swapped out with an LED bulb, but this is what would flash. Um, but the way the system works when hooked up to the RV, it actually turns your driving light slash brake light into the turn signal as well. So it's tricking the system into using this light as your turn signal as well. So that's kind of cool. This system basically gives you LED turn signals because it fools the system into using this light as not just a, a running light, but also as a running light, a brake light, and a turn signal. And in case you wanted to see what the plug looks like up front, Looks really good, nice and clean. We have our base plate mounted, have our brake actuator right here. Everything's looking really good. This thing is ready to be flat towed. We just have to do the RV side of it now, which is really just setting it up with the receiver and then plugging the cable into the seven-way connector on the back of the motorhome. 
Okay, so it's working. The turn signal function is even working. And I'm assuming that the truck probably has some intelligence to figure out the different type of lighting that might be connected because you may have a trailer that has just a regular trailer and it may have the dual filament style where it's dimmer and then lighter versus a vehicle. So really we're just turning the vehicle into a trailer is all we're doing. But yeah, looks like it's working. It's pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and get everything wrapped up, cleaned up. Like I said, a couple little hiccups along the way, but it's working now and I should be able to tow his uh, his escape around no problem with the F450. Anyways, guys, big shout out to the folks over at eTrailer again for providing all this equipment to us to be able to install and show you how it works. Glad it went off without a hitch except for a dead battery on the escape. Aside from that though, everything's looking really good. Guys, please leave a comment below. We would love your feedback. If this is something you've done to your own vehicle, please leave a comment about that as well. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.